All right, perfect. Well, thank you so much again for joining me. My name is Jason Levine, Principal Worldwide Evangelist for Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about two very specific features, our new uh, uh, limiter effect. Well, actually, it's a reimagined uh, dynamics processing effect. Some of you may remember it from a previous release of Premiere Pro, which includes a noise gate for sort of silencing noise and background things in between spoken passages. And I'll show you how to use that very quickly. And then to show you probably one of the greatest new innovations on the Audition side, which you can use for audio finishing, sending your entire sequence from Premiere Pro to Audition, which is auto ducking. And this is really the concept of having, you know, dialogue and music under the dialogue. And traditionally, unless you sort of understood the process of sidechain ducking, which you could do previously in Audition, you couldn't really do this in Premiere Pro, you'd probably be drawing a lot of envelopes and kind of key framing your audio volume in and out on the music track to kind of fade in and out against dialogue. Well, now we have an automatic function that leverages our very own Adobe Sensei machine learning technology. It's gonna make this process incredibly easy, uh, incredibly effective, and I'll show you really it's unbelievably simple to set up. So you don't have to be a master audio engineer to make this work. And if nothing else, it can kind of get you most of the way there very quickly. And then you've got a couple of simple sliders to play around with to really improve upon the result that you're hearing. Let's do this. Okay, the Michael, let's do it. Switch over my screen. Did I just really snap and I did. <laughs> oh, I'm a child of 80s, 70s and 80s television. Okay. So here we are uh, with an edit with my good friend and oft music collaborator, Fuzzy Island. And this is from an interview that I shot a couple of years ago for a piece that we were doing on inspiration. And specifically, it was all based around kind of Behance. Now, if we just take a quick listen here, um, this is unmixed. The only thing that I've done, if we look in the mixer here, is that you can see that the dialogue is just at zero. This is at the default position in the, in the audio mixer. And I've simply just dropped the music around 13 dB. I've not drawn any envelopes or done anything to the volume. It's just a consistent minus 13 dB. So let's take a quick listen to what this sounds like. Three, four. My name is Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just a storyteller, guitar player, singer, songwriter. I'm so down hearted. The next part here. Said I think it's very cool. The one thing I miss about my young Okay. So again, common scenario, right? We've got some nice kind of evenly and by the way, beautifully mastered music. <laughs> if I do say so myself. Um, and then we've got the dialogue here, uh, which is just it's not, I don't think I've done, I've done no mixing to this whatsoever. It's right off the phone. It's not even compressed or gated or anything like that. So maybe we want to treat that dialogue first, just to kind of even it out a little bit before we worry about ducking the music. So you've got a lot of different options and a lot of different effects that you can use in Premiere. But I think the most useful thing here is the revamped dynamics effect, because this kind of gives you everything you need in one space. It's got some decent metering, and it makes a huge difference on kind of what you hear inside of Premiere. So let's go ahead and solo the iPhone track here, which is again, the secondary audio. My name's Fuzzy Island, and, uh, and I'm gonna turn this up just so I can hear it a little bit better myself over here. I give us a little more music, volume write on stream music, as write well. Stories. Okay, and we're gonna go up to our effects, Amplitude and compression and dynamics. You might remember this effect with the auto gate, compressor, expander, and limiter all right here. It's got some very nice metering, very simple standard controls. And this really allows you to just very quickly tackle audio issues like super fast. And I believe we've even got some decent presets in here. Yes, yeah, so you can see we've got an auto gate, hard compression, hard limiting, soft clip, noise gate, medium compression. You can try those out at your leisure. The one that I want to use here is auto gate, because when you take a listen, you can just hear that there's some background noise in here. And more importantly, uh, it's not something that's necessarily offensive. Um, the noise is fine when he's talking, but when he stops talking, you're hearing just a little too much room tone. So how do we how do we fix that? All right. So first, let's just listen to this again, isolated by itself. I guess I'm just an old storyteller guitar player, singer, songwriter, I suppose. Yeah. 
Okay. Let's go ahead and wind this back. We're going to turn on auto gate. Now, there's four settings in here. Threshold, attack, release, and hold. Now, again, you can find out more about this in my audio 101. Threshold is the point at which the gate will either kick in or, again, sort of kick out. It's the point at which it must cross that threshold, exceed that threshold, where it opens the gate. It opens that window to let the audio through. And then when the audio falls below that threshold, it closes it up and silences everything. This is a fantastic way just to very cleanly, um, sort of quickly fade, fade in and out on dialogue, on voices, on vocals, without keeping all of that background noise and or room tone going the whole time. Now, sometimes you want that. Sometimes you do. Um, in the case of this, it's just, it's just kind of simple background noise. I've got a separate recording of room tone that I could always fly in there. Always a good idea, of course, when you're on set doing dialogue and interviews to capture room tone. Um, but I just wanted to kind of silence this a little bit better, uh, make it a little cleaner in between those cuts, especially because we've got a lot of sections here where there's going to be some B-roll. So just kind of looking at the volume meters here, I'm going to start playing this back and adjusting the threshold and take a listen to what this does. And I think we're going to have to go around somewhere around minus 35, minus 40, if I'm eyeballing this correctly. Take a listen. Here we go. What's the island? I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller, guitar player, singer, songwriter, I suppose. Yeah. Okay. Now you notice when the default setting of minus 20 was there, it was actually, it was cutting out a bit, right? Because his voice was just kind of on the edge. There. So it was causing that gate to try and close because he's speaking a bit softly. Take a listen again. Oh, now it's not even kicking in at all, as you can hear. So we really need to drop this. Storyteller. Right. Until you hear sort of a clean voice, a clean, consistent delivery. And then you can also <laughs> see that, again, when it's doing that. And uh, I play music, I write music. When it's in the green the gate is open, right? We're letting the audio pass through. And when it goes to red, we've closed it down. Now, one thing that you can do, you notice that we've got the attack set to one millisecond. That's the default. That attack for dialogue is typically what you want. You kind of want it very, very fast, especially if it's even keel dialogue. Now, if you've got issues with kind of dynamics in the dialogue, sometimes that could be a little too aggressive. So you can slow the attack down. The difference is there is that sometimes you might miss a beginning consonant. So a faster attack time is going to ensure that you get everything that's said. Now, another thing that's going to help you kind of preserve a more natural sound is by increasing slightly the release and or the hold time. The release is just that after the gate closes, how long it takes to really officially close that window down. And the hold is once it's open before the release, how long it kind of lingers before it closes the gate. So the hold time, I think, is also set to around one millisecond. I generally leave that around 30 to 50. It just tends to make things sound a little bit more natural. And then the release time, you just kind of have to, you have to just listen to hear when it sounds natural. So the nice thing about this passage is he's got a lot of pausing. So let's take a listen again. And I think we've got it just about right. My name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller, guitar player, singer, songwriter, I suppose. Yeah. Very nice. And you can hear that by just adjusting that about another 50 milliseconds. Um, it just sounds very natural. We're catching all of the consonants. There's no nothing is being sort of artificially cut off. Again, this is a this is a problem that you'd have sometimes if the attack isn't fast enough. You're going to get things cut off. It's not going to open that gate. It's not going to open the window fast enough. And similarly, if people sometimes trail off when they speak like that, if you have that release time <laughs> set too quickly or no hold, you're going to cut off the end of their speech as well. So again, is there an absolute? No, you have to listen to it. It'll be different with every piece of dialogue that's recorded. But generally here, a release of 100 to 300 milliseconds. And remember, 250 milliseconds is a quarter of a second, right? So that's kind of enough 
to allow your ear to kind of process that, to close that gate, to silence the background noise. If it's too fast, it might sound too abrupt. Granted, when we have music underneath that, that changes too. So let's go ahead and do that now. So now that we've got the music and our, our gate happening here, I actually want to send this whole thing over to Audition to use our new auto ducking feature, which is part of the essential sound panel. Now it's not yet available in Premiere Pro. We're making you go to Audition for this. The reason for that is, well, this is really a true audio finishing workflow. And frankly, it's very simple. It's very fast and efficient. And honestly, even if you never use Audition, if you do this one thing, it's, it's enough. And you can send the audio back to Premiere or finish it directly from Audition very quickly. So if we go up to the edit menu here and we choose edit in Adobe Audition sequence, we're going to give this a name and we'll call this fuzzy selects audio duck. Selection will be our work area. I think that should be fine. All the content we have there. Video, we're going to send the video through dynamic link. So any video, any effects, this is by the way, not color graded or anything. It's just raw. Um, Anything that's coming through here will be sent directly to Adobe Audition and will play in real time, whether it's red content, DSLR content, mirrorless content, H.264, H.265, GoPro, uh, Mavic, whatever, it doesn't matter. Anything in the Premiere timeline will be sent dynamically, non-destructively, without rendering to Audition. You can set audio handles if you're going to plan on doing some additional audio editing of these clips. The default is one second. You can adjust this as, however you see fit. And then this is where it gets real interesting because you have the ability to transfer audio clip effects and audio track effects. Both Audition and Premiere Pro understand the ability to add effects to the clip itself or the entire track. And in the case of our Dynamics noise gate, it's applied at the track level, which also means that non-destructively, we can turn that on or off on the Audition side, which is very, very cool. And you'll see here that you have options to transfer everything or simply remove all effects. So really useful. Pan and volume information. This again will, had you done any um, keyframing of pan or volume on the clips down here, that would appear as non-destructive keyframed envelopes in Audition as well. I haven't done any, so everything's just going to come through sort of as it is. And then you can choose to open it in Audition. So let's go ahead and do that now. Everything looks good here. Click OK. And you can even see that it took all of the same color labels that we had in Premiere Pro and applied them here in Audition. So let's once again play this back uh, and see what we've got. Three, four. My name's Fuzzy Island, and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, okay. And notice, by the way, that the dynamics effect that we added in Premiere Pro, here it is on the track with our exact same settings, everything preserved, all right? So any effects that you've got used on Premiere, <clears throat> transfer over to Audition in this non-destructive process. And that video is being streamed in via dynamic link. And just like in Premiere Pro, you've also got fractional playback. So if your machine doesn't can't really handle full quality or half res or quarter res or eighth res, depending upon you, if you've got 6K, 8K, you'll have an option there for a 16th res as well. You can adjust those settings here to play back the content inside of Audition's video panel. Super useful, really cool. All right, so let's get to auto ducking. So here's how it works. So first what we need to do, because we're using the essential sound panel, and again, now I'm in a workspace that has that currently docked off here to the side. You can always open up essential sound simply by going to the window menu and choosing it here. The first thing we need to do is tell the essential sound panel what the dialogue tracks are, because ultimately the music is going to duck against dialogue. Now you don't have to do this. This is just a best practice, particularly if you're keeping all of this in the Adobe workflow. So I could select everything because we're only using the iPhone audio here. I'm gonna select all of these blue clips. And in Essential Sound, you'll see that illuminated now, we have the option to select an audio type. And in this case, we're going to select dialogue. And that's all we have to do. We're not gonna do anything to the dialogue itself. We're then going to come down to the music track here in yellow. Once again, I'm going to tell Essential Sound that this is music. 
And when I do that, much like with dialogue, what it does, Essential Sound will now reveal to you a series of effects and filters and processes that you would commonly use to treat music. In this case, we're going to use the new ducking feature. So watch how simple and easy this is. So we're going to enable ducking. When we do that, very quickly, if you look down there, all right, so fast, it analyzes, it analyzes your clip very, very quickly. Okay. Then you'll see that you have a couple of options here on what it is that you want to duck against. Now, do we want to duck against dialogue? That's the default. Other music, sound effects, ambience, or duck against clips without an assigned audio type. So even if you forget to do that, if you simply choose that option, that's like the no tag logo right there, it'll still work and it'll even work dynamically, which is so, so cool. Now, the thing to keep in mind here is that if you do tag it, it just makes your life a little easier because then you also have the ability to globally or individually affect and process all of your dialogue in the essential sound panel, which allows you additional levels of compression, EQ, effects, noise reduction, rumble reduction, hiss reduction, all of those kinds of things. So you really have a lot of flexibility there. Now what you're going to notice on the clip, and in fact, you know what, I think I'm going to change the clip color because it's a little hard to see. Let's go to something like a, a green. Here we go. A little more, a little more contrast there. Is that by enabling auto ducking, what it actually did was that it's drawing its own volume keyframed envelope where it believes it needs to fade in or fade out the music. Uh, this is all machine learning and it did it in seconds, okay? It's auto detecting the threshold, right? We talked about threshold with auto, uh, with auto gating. Same concept here. It looks for the threshold, the point at which it should begin ducking the music and then sets it accordingly. And as I mentioned, you have three very simple settings here. Sensitivity, we've even got little tips here and it'll tell you, set the threshold at which to start to duck this clip against other clips. The amount of reduction in decibels, pretty easy. And then the fade, so it's the look ahead time. So this is how quickly it fades down and then fades back up again. So fit quickly or, or slowly, the music fades up or down. You can see you've got a range from fast to slow measured in milliseconds. So these are currently all of the default settings. So now that we've got that in there, let's take a listen to this and see what we've got. Three, four. My name's Fuzzy Island and uh, I play music, I write music, I write stories, tell stories. Uh, I guess I'm just an old storyteller, guitar player, singer, songwriter, I suppose. Since you said well. I think it's very cool. The one thing I miss about my younger days when I was living in Tennessee right. and folks didn't have. All right. So musical. And you'll notice here that even though he's pausing, right, he's taking some, you know, taking some breaths here. Let's let's listen. I'm sitting on a porch with old friends and playing, but. It's close. It's like the technological version of that. Okay. Now, if you ultimately wanted the music to kind of reappear in those sections, well, first of all, we've got the noise gate on here. But the other thing is you could drop the sensitivity. Now, as I mentioned, this is all completely dynamic. So when I did that, can you see what happened down here? Look, in that longer pause, it just now faded up and down the music. Now that's gonna sound weird. You, you, you wouldn't do that, but it's showing you that that's how it works, a single slider. And again, if you get little sections where it's doing that and you're like, oh no, he's, he, leave the pause, adjust the sensitivity higher so that it keeps those sections again, very clean and kind of lets that uh, dead air when he's sort of thinking, keep the music at the same level. You don't want the music fading up. Again, I think the reduction is pretty good because we want to focus on the dialogue. If it's maybe a little too aggressive, we can just adjust it here. So maybe we'll only drop it, let's say around 13 decibels. So let's try uh, this one over here, this next piece. That's all a feeling thing, you know? Uh, Inspiration is a feeling. Yeah, you know. I That's so cool. You can actually hear me interviewing. And again, because of the sensitivity and the fade time, 
it allowed me as the interviewer, my dialogue to come through there. Again, all can be adjusted via the sensitivity slider. Now, I think this fade of 800 milliseconds actually sounds pretty good. Take a look at what's happening down here. Let me see if I can get both of these on screen. Yeah, I can. So just, oh, whoops. So just watch some of those fade curves down here. As I adjust this, can you see how it's reshaping the fade curve there a little bit? Again, giving you a little bit more or a little bit less time. And as we go really, really fast, now it's actually fading in between some of those quiet sections, which we don't want. So again, to kind of keep the music lingering, even when someone, I do this a lot when I speak, uh, pause, increase that fade time so that it stays ducked. So, so easy, so useful. Now, people often would think that, okay, well, that's amazing. It's automatic. It's cool. What if I want to then manually make changes to the fade? Maybe there's a section that it just, it just isn't doing it uh, quite right. Well, we thought of that, and it's called Monitor Clip Changes, which is on by default. So if we uncheck that box, now what you see is you have access to all of the keyframes themselves, and you can go in here and modify and drop the music or fade the music or do any individual change that you want just like that manually, all with auto-ducking, all with Adobe Sensei machine learning technology as part of the essential sound panel in the latest update to Adobe Audition CC. So thanks again, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.